Now, we at Bezat Hashem do everything. Anyone that saw a recent video, a three, four minute video that Baruch Hashem, Tim Hashem made about the different things, the alphabet of uh, Bezat Hashem, for every letter there's something that we do at the organization. Uh, you know, every letter of the alphabet, we have uh, one or two things that uh, we do, whether it's helping, uh, you know, teach people that, uh, you know, want to kill somebody, you know, particularly babies that are in their stomach, you know, so we try to teach them that it's a baby and it's not uh, some uh, steak. And we try to help women that uh, are, uh, you know, about to have an abortion uh, in any way that we can, whenever we have the opportunity. Baruch Hashem, we've had a uh, couple of times uh, already where it was last minute and uh, not only did we merit to see uh, the woman say, no, she's not going to do it, but also see the baby too. And, uh, you know, that little baby is going to grow up and never going to know how close they were to die. Uh, but uh, because of the power of the Torah, Baruch Hashem, the baby is alive and well. And uh, many other wonderful miracles. And you do a lot of different things. We also, you know, we have our Kiru packages that we send all over the world. We sent one recently to Philippines. We've sent them uh, to India. We've sent them to Australia. We've sent things all over the place. Once in a while, people also uh, purchased tefillin from us that uh, we get from people that we know uh, that have a Yirat uh, Shemaim, that we know who the sofer is, uh, meaning who the scribe is, that we know that this is not a person that's writing tefillin while watching the news. Or better yet, uh, there was one story that became famous recently, a few years ago, where uh, they found out that a certain sofer was writing mezuzot while watching the news. But how could you find that out? Because he was so into the news, he wrote what part of the news on the mezuzah. He wrote a few words that he got from the news on the mezuzah. He didn't, you know, his mind is in the news, not in the mezuzah. Or sometimes you, uh, you know, you have people that have no yirat shamayim and many times not even any belief in God at all, where they hire goyim to write mezuzot or, 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 or tefillin, uh, especially uh, Asian people that have a... Uh, are more likely to have a uh, skill set in uh, writing Hebrew. And uh, many times people, you know, come to us, they all want to buy tefillin. And we tell them, listen, this tefillin is from somebody that we know that has Yirat Shamaim, Tzadik, this, that. Nine out of ten people have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Rabbi. Can you just send it to me? You're like, How much? Can you send it to me? I don't have any money. Send it. You're like, Great. Yeah. Once in a blue, we also deal with Mezuzot. But Mezuzot is a little more difficult. Why? People don't understand the value of mezuzot. And today I'm going to try to teach you what the value of mezuzot is briefly. But not just words. I'm going to show it to you. Because sometimes people come to me and ask me, Hi, do you have mezuzot? I say, yeah. How much is a mezuzah? I say, I don't deal with cheap mezuzot. I don't have patience. I don't have patience to sell you $50 mezuzot. I mean, $50 mezuzah, I don't even know if it's kosher. Maybe you can find somebody that can send you $50 mezuzah, I'm sure. I don't deal with that. I usually deal with more expensive mezuzot. Not because I uh, like to sell expensive stuff, but because I know this, it's worth it. It's worth it. So I have some basics that I get from a friend of mine. They're a little over $100 or so. Uh, that are basic mezuzot, but that are kosher. And I know this comes from a good source, which if compared to some, if you go on, on eBay, you could buy it for $30. Or $10, or $5, whatever you want to buy it with. On Amazon, maybe you could buy it. I don't deal with anything like that. That's newspaper. The yeah, cheapest one I have, I've, I've dealt with that I saw it's kosher, good quality, that I'll be willing to put in, a, in, in one of my students' houses, uh, $125, something like that. So you have a house, seven, eight, ten doors, you know, it comes up to, to a couple of dollars. So he's like, oh, wow, it's expensive. I said, no, no, that's the cheap one. That's the cheap one. What do you mean that's the cheap one? I said, no, I usually deal with mezuzot that are $500 and more. I said, what? $500 for a mezuzah? For one? I said, yeah, one, one, barely, but one. And now I have a, Baruch Hashem, a tzaddik friend of mine, let's say, Dayan, Mekubal, Amash, something special. He's trying to help us uh, not only sanctify Hashem's name, but he's also helping us by uh, uh, taking part of the cost himself. Uh, he's the one that's writing the mezuzot, but he says a, uh, for, for a time being, he'll try to do his best he can to keep it at 350 which is for a five hundred dollar mezuzah, three fifty. But in reality, you buy this mezuzah anywhere else, it's going to be a thousand dollars. But in reality, you're not going to buy it. Why? Why would you pay a thousand dollars for a mezuzah? 
Why would you pay three hundred dollars for mezuzah? What is the difference between the mezuzah that you can buy on eBay for thirty dollars, or the Judaica store for fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, and a mezuzah that's one hundred twenty-five dollars, a mezuzah that's five hundred dollars? I mean, is there that much of a difference? I mean, Rabbi, isn't it after all just writing some words on a piece of scroll and we're finished? No. Now, I could explain it to you until I'm blue in the face. And you're not going to understand. Not because, chas v'shalom, you have any lackings. But simply, this is something you have to see to believe. So without further ado, come up, the guys, come up. The ladies, after. And you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I explained to you the difference, exactly what you get at a Judaica store, at a, uh, you know, at a eBay at some place you don't even know, first and foremost, you need to know, come behind me. First and foremost, you need to know that if you buy it from a place that you don't know who wrote it, especially Judaica stores, eBay, Amazon, internet type of places, there's a very, very high chance it's not a kosher mezuzah, even if it's rained perfect. One, either because it was rained by a non-Jew, and if it's rained by a non-Jew, even if that non-Jew is Job, Job from the Tanakh, even if he wrote a mezuzah, it's not kosher. Why? That's the way it is. That's just the bottom line. He could be great. Mezuzot are only for Jews. So if a non-Jew wrote it, it's not. Or better yet, a uh, machine. Machine wrote it. There's now a machine that they invented, the reforms, they, the reform uh, heretics. They invented a machine that writes Sifret Torah. Sifret Torah, they write, it's not kosher. You can't pray for me, you got to burn it. But they don't care. Now, in a couple of weeks ago, we read Parashat Ekev. Parashat Ekev is one of the places in the Torah that talks about mezuzot. So, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, "Ukatavtem al mezuzot betecha ubisharecha," that you shall write them on your doorpost, on your house, upon your gates. So, Kadosh Baruch Hu gives us a mitzvah from the Torah to have mezuzot. Why? This is number one. Number one a commemoration of what happened in Egypt. Ten plagues. You had a plague that millions of people died in an instant. Kadosh Baruch Hu killed the firstborn. But if you were one of the Hebrews, one of the Jewish people, or eventually become Jewish people, you put blood on your doorpost, you had protection. Malach HaMavet skipped you. Skipped you. So that's one. Two, it's protection for the house. Three, it's divrei Torah. This is part of the Torah on your house. Now what if you have a sefer Torah, $100,000 sefer Torah inside your house? Do you need a mezuzah? That's what Korach asked. Ask Moshe Rabbeinu, if I have a house full of sefer Torah, sefer Torah has the whole Torah, mezuzah has only a couple of paragraphs. So if I have a house full of sefer Torah, each sefer Torah, $100,000, $200,000, do I still need a mezuzah for, for $100? Korach said no. Moshe Rabbeinu said yes. Why? Akadosh Baruch Hu said it. What happened? Korach, the ground swallowed him. Till this day, till this day, he's screaming. Him and all of the people that follow his family are screaming inside Gehenom. Moshe emet, Torah emet, Akadosh Baruch Hu emet, everything is emet. And we are liars, he says. Is a chacham. The uh, Baal Ahavat Chaim. Sefer called Avat Chaim has a lot of interesting stories. His grandson is a uh, enormous uh, Talmud Chacham, Rav Shani in Eretz Yisrael. He wrote in his Sefer that one time a, uh, a Jew met a uh, one of these uh, Arabs, and uh, while he was uh, traveling, and the Arab told him, "You want to come see something interesting?" He said, "What?" He said, "You want to come here?" Your Korach? You want to hear your Korach? He said, yeah. He takes him to a certain place in the desert. He said, come over here. He starts hearing sounds. He goes, come closer, come closer. Hear sounds, sounds. He starts hearing. Moshe emet, Torah to emet. HaKadosh Baruch Hu emet. And we are shakranim. We're liars. He put out something in the, uh, in the ground. He says, it's so hot. It's so hot, they have to pretty much stay away from it. Mama showed him where it is. Now, so obviously, Korach was wrong about his, his, his whole idea of a mezuzah. Now, what is 
a kosher mezuzah look like versus non-kosher mezuzah, and so on. Now, I'm going to show you a few, so you see the difference with your own eyes. So you have, now if you're not a Bikia, you, you don't speak Hebrew, you've never seen Sfat HaKodesh, or you don't know the difference, in the beginning it won't make much of a difference to you. Okay? But, be patient and you'll see. This is a mezuzah. Size of it is not necessarily relevant. You can make them small, you can make them big. But you can see from here, the letters are what they are. And this is another kosher mezuzah. Has many mistakes on it. For example, here in this word over here, baderich, the chav sofit looks like a nun sofit. So it spells baderin, not baderich. So it's supposed to, this is a verse from the Torah. Can't make mistakes like that. Other times, also again here, it's supposed to be a chav sofit, and it's a nun sofit again. A, uh, uh, other times you see some of the letters are too close to each other. There's very little space. But from the surface, there's not much of a difference that you can tell. I mean, it looks fine. Unless you know what you're looking for and how and who and what. It looks fine. It looks like a, you know, mezuzah, right? Will you do me a favor? One of you? Yeah. Hold this. Hold this open. Actually, you know what? We'll keep this. You'll hold it open when I show all three. I'll show three. Okay, now. This is also another mezuzah. The ktav, the writing, looks similar. But this is paper. This is printer paper. It's not cloth. Printer paper that was made to look like so you can't write on printer paper. You have to write on a cloth. You have to write on a scroll. So, and on top of that, there's many, many mistakes. Uh, similar to the other one, uh, here you see that the two letters are touching. That's already a problem. The anochi, the two letters, the, the nun and the chaf are touching. A, uh, there is a uh, several several different issues with this. But again, from the surface, if you don't know what you're doing. Looks fine. It's Hebrew. Looks like the, a uh, little bit, kind of, sort of like what the Tanakh looks like. It's Hebrew. Kind of looks cool, actually, with the little crowns. What's the problem, right? Well, you have to look for it. So you figure, oh, maybe it's only for the spelling errors. Or if there's missing letters. No, no, it's not so much. Not just that. So you have that. This is a better quality one. Better quality one, but still not kosher. Also, similar, again, better quality writing. But also has a uh, uh, different errors on it. But again, you see the writing of what it is, right? Okay. Now these are different mezuzot that you buy from people, from eBay, from so on. Now if you have a real shark that loves... Hashem, I'm being sarcastic, he writes you something like this on cardboard, and he has to be, probably have some type of mental problems to write such a thing. If you look over here, for example, this one, this one is very special. This is very special. This, Anochim et Tzavecha, but the, tz the Tzadik looks like a three. <laughs> Instead of a Tzadik, he wrote a number three. Why? Because in script... The tzaddik looks like a three, but even in script doesn't really look like this. Either way, point is you don't write script in the mezuzah. This mezuzah is what it looks like. But again, for the average person, it's Hebrew. It's Hebrew. Whatever. This mezuzah, that mezuzah. What's the problem, right? Okay. So some, someone can hold this. I can hold the paper one. Yeah, okay. Paper. Okay, hold that one. Don't worry, you can't ruin them. They're already ruined. <laughs> Okay, you hold this one, but hold it so the, the camera can see it. I don't want to see your hand. I want to see your... Uh, the, oh, okay. You understand? That's the whole point. Okay. You see it? Okay, so you got that. Those two, two examples are enough. 
Okay. Now, a simple mezuzah that's kosher by Yireh Shamayim Jew, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it's supposed to look like. Now, you have this, right? Judaica store, eBay, Joe Schmo, Steve, Yoshke, whoever selling it, this is what it looks like, right? Now, why, why would I go from 30, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars and go pay almost double the price for kosher mezuzah? For what? Why, why would I do such a thing? Because this is what it's supposed to look like. You see, Rabotai, this is what it's supposed to look like. You don't even need to know how to speak a word of Hebrew. This is what it's supposed to look like. Like this. This is a beautiful kosher mezuzah. Not $500. But a good mezuzah that you know was written by Yireh Shamayim Jew, that is something that did not watch the news, not during and not after, not before. And this is what it's supposed to look like. You compare it to this, uh, this guy over here, and this guy over here, doesn't look so good anymore. Now, what does a... Now, if, Netanel, you could hold this one. What does a $500 mezuzah look like? There's a couple of different versions. I have one with me. The other one I like, forgot at home. Now this may look the same to some of you, but it's a world apart. Number one, because of who wrote it. Number two, because of the cloth. Three, because of the kavanot. Four, because of the actual writing itself. Either way, the difference between this and this is Shamayim Baret, it's heaven and earth. But even the difference between something like this and this one, for anyone that understands the issue, is a world apart. Now, for your pocket, of course it's a world apart. But I'm talking about in reality. Someone that understands the, the difference in writing, who, what, when, and how, these two are worlds apart. And a person that knows and is able, this is the only thing they would go with, simply because, again, this is a world apart. Now, the uh, mezuzah, when you go and buy it from some place, you're not going to check it. You're just going to put it on your doorpost. So you have no idea if you have toilet paper in there, or you have one of these things, which is probably a little less than toilet paper, or you have, well, you don't know what you have. So you're not going to check it. And then sometimes you send it to certain people, oh, you can check it for me. Yeah, yeah, it's $10. And sometimes they don't really check it, they just take the $10. So in reality... If you go and buy a mezuzah from a place you don't know, it's on you. It's on you. When you buy something from a place that you know, if you could afford an expensive one or not, bottom line is, this is the protection for your house. You don't need to be an expert to know that there's a world of difference between something like this, as beautiful as this, versus this thing over here. I'm not talking about the size. Forget about the size. You can make this smaller also. You wouldn't, but you make it get to make it smaller also. Why? Because if you recognize this writing, this one specific, you know what's why you recognize it? Because this is exactly what is in the Sefer Torah. This is how you write a Sefer Torah. Now, you write a Sefer Torah, it's 60, 70, 80, 100,000 dollars. Why? It go, takes a lot of work. An enormous amount of work. This, five minutes. If that much. And that's the reality. So that's the thing that a lot of... I didn't know this. When I was young, I didn't know. Why would anybody spend $5,000 on mezuzah? Just go buy one for 50 bucks. Like, why, why would you go, why go... Go buy five of them for $200. Get a discount. Five, buy five, get one free. You could do that. You could buy one five and get one free. But in reality, you have no protection on your house. You have something like this. You understand that somebody cares enough about a Kadosh Baruch Hu to do this. Because the people that usually do these things, they're not even doing it for the money. They're doing it, trying to make a living, a little bit, whatever, but the point is that to put that much work into it, it's not worth it. Why? It takes a really long time and there's not many customers. There's a lot of customers for junk. Junk, you could dime a dozen. But for good quality mezuzot, it's very difficult. Even, you guys could all go back, thank you very much for your assistance. Thank you.
Now, Rav David Yosef, Shikhye, Rav Ovad Yassan, one time told a story, and he said that um, he went and visited a, uh, a student of his. And the uh, student asked him, I said, Rabbi, uh, I need to get some new mezuzot for my house. He said, okay, no problem. He goes, how much you get the uh, mezuzot? They told him a price, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars of mezuzah, whatever it was. Said, Ooh, Rabbi, it's expensive. He goes, oh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Think about it. He's like, all right. He says, uh, what, you get a new house? He goes, yeah, you want to come see it? Sure. So he sees the house. And he sees the house, fancy house. And uh, the Rav sees the window shades, the, you know, the window treatment, they call it. In the rich world, the window treatment. Like as if they went to a spa. The window treatment. See, it's fancy schmancy. He says, where'd you get this? He goes, oh, Rabbi, this is from Italy. Psh, Italy, wow. This is expensive. He goes, it's the best. Rabbi, it's the best. No, how, how much is the best? He goes, honestly, Rabbi, each window cost me $25,000. Because that, the guy's a thief. He goes, Rabbi, how could you say such a thing? You know who this guy is? You know what kind of designer he is? You know how this and how that and how this and how that. Do, 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 do. He's like, oh, so if he's good, it's, it's to be expensive. Because, yeah, obviously. He says, so how come a guy that decided to make himself famous by uh, marketing himself as a certain way, no problem for you to spend $25,000. But a uh, guy that learns to law all day and spends a, maybe an hour a day at 3 o'clock in the morning when he has time, writing him his mezuzah, but he wants to sell for a couple hundred dollars, that's not, that's uh, it's too much. It's too much. How come? How come 25000 for a window is not too much? And the guy never understood. Never understood until he realized from his own, from his, from his own mistake that when you don't value something, you don't value something, every price is expensive. When you do value something, you'll pay anything for it. But sometimes, you have to see it to believe it. You have to see it to believe it. I have another one, a bigger version of this. I personally like the other one even more, but that's just my personal preference. And uh, the, uh, the beautiful thing is that when you see you see mezuzot once in a blue moon, somebody, you know, people ask me about to check their mezuzot. I don't really like to do it because it takes a lot of time. But I do it whenever, you know, whenever it's needed and there's nobody else to do it. And every time, I'm shocked at how people buy this stuff without knowing what they bought. But worse yet, how someone would even allow themselves to sell it. Like how wicked you have to be to sell such a thing. Like, it's not even, forget about that, even the kosher version, even if, let's say, for example, the other two that you saw were kosher, if you compare the writing, it's not very, it's, it's called, it's not meudal. It's not good quality. It's like, okay, so even if, let's say, all the letters were in the right place, okay, and there was no spelling errors, and they were all drawn the right way, you, the writing difference, the difference in quality of writing, you see, this one took, I don't know, 10 minutes, that one probably took a couple of hours. What? Because you see that there's a big difference. So even if it's a kosher version, kosher version, you see that there's a big difference. But when you see that someone sells you something that's printer paper or a cardboard, and on top of it they write you a handwriting that you have to probably be, I don't know, have some type of mental deficiencies. To write, what do you see? What do you see? Lack of your mind. No fear of Hashem, and only fear of money. And the Gemara says, someone that has an addiction to money, it's more dangerous than anything else. It's more horrible than anything else. Why? They'd even sell their parents. How so? The Gemara gives an example. He says, the Chachamim made a gzera that as soon as a 
person passes away, Shem even if he's a tzaddik, his body becomes tameh, impure. Now let's touch it. If you touch it, you become tameh, but we're all tameh now. But the point is, is that the body is tameh. He says, why do they make the body is tameh? Why? He says, because if the body did not become tameh, the kids, the kids that are obsessed over money and are fighting over the inheritance of their father or mother, they're going to fight. You get the house. I'll take the land. You get the bank account. I get the stock account. You get this. You get that. Oh, how come you took more than me? How come you took more? They're going to fight, 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 fight. Eventually, they're going to get to the bottom line. Okay, fine, but you got more than me. You know what? That's it. I'm taking, I'm taking Abba's skin. I'm taking Ima's skin, and I'm going to take that. That's me. I'm taking the body. It's my body. And they take this, they said, Chachamim said, they would have taken the parents' skin and turned it into carpets. Because when you have an addiction to money, and that's your God, you don't see that there's anything wrong with that. No, no, I'm commemorating the honor of my dad every time we step on the carpet, or every time we have a nice window shade. We think of Abba and Ima. Well, Abba, Ima, right here. We, we look at them all the time. Why? Addiction to money. It's a very dangerous addiction. And unfortunately, Rabbi Tayyip Karim, Chachamim told us that the last 2,000 years of the world, the first 2,000 years had a certain uh, uh, test, second 2,000 years had a second test, and third, the biggest test is money. People are simply addicted to money. They have no problem spending money to go to some non-kosher vacation, no problem spending three, four thousand dollars on a navigation system on a car, no problem to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a watch, no problem spending all types of money for nonsense, but when it comes to Torah, all of a sudden everybody's broke. Rabbi, you have a tefillin? Yeah. What kind of tefillin do you want? Do you want the good ones, the top of the line, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, fifteen hundred, more of this? No, 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 Rabbi, no, no, no. You have something cheaper? Yeah, you get maybe for $900. You have a job, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a job. $900 you want? No, no, you have something cheaper? Okay, you want to send $600? $600, you can afford $600? I mean, it's, it's kosher, but it's not the best. I mean, it's not for, really for, for you. I mean, you should get some. Well, whatever, it's good. At least you have tefillin. You have something cheaper, Rabbi? You have something cheaper? What do you want, $50? $50? Yeah, yeah, you have those? Yeah, you yeah. have? No. Oh, you know who does? Yeah, Kmart. Costco. Go buy from Costco. Guy makes 50, 100, 200,000 dollars a year, wants to buy a couple hundred dollars filin. Why? How come your car? You didn't uh, think twice before you committed to a uh, monthly plan, 500, 700 dollars a month for a car. How come when you... Uh, the phone that you wanted. You didn't think twice before spending $800 on the first day it came out because you wanted to be the first to have the phone. $800 on a phone. How come you didn't think twice before that new Rolex came out for a discount of only $18,000, first one to buy it? Discount. Cheap. Balash. Almost free. How come? It comes to Tfilin, comes to Mezuzot, it comes to Talit, you see grown men Grown men wearing their bar mitzvah tefillin. The guy is 35 years old. He's still wearing the same tefillin his parents bought him when he was 13 years old. Abba, can you buy me a uh, mezuzot for my new house? But you bought the house though. Half a million dollar house. Million dollar house. Yeah, yeah, but don't you have a connection with the rabbi? Maybe he'll give it to you for a discount. How come you didn't ask for a house discount? You want to save $20 in the mezuzah? I want to save $50 in the mezuzah? No, but Rabbi, it's 10 mezuzot, 20 mezuzot. Oh, it's 20 mezuzot and you're actually complaining? What does 20 mezuzot mean to a smart person? You have 20 rooms. That's what it means. If you have 20 rooms, you can afford the $500 mezuzah and the $1,000 mezuzah if you have 20 rooms in your house. But what does a person that's in love with money think? 
Ah, 20 rooms, even if I get the cheap one, it's at least a couple of thousand dollars. Ooh, Rabbi, you guys are all about money. You guys, all you want is money. No, we don't want money. In fact, take your money. We don't want to sell to you. How about that? A woman came to Rabbi Ponovich years ago. Rabbi Ponovich had yeshiva, thousands of young men learning Torah non-stop. Multi-million dollar budget. So they need to raise a lot of money. Rich woman comes. American. Gave the rabbi check. Wrote a check on a spot after she saw everything. Here you go, rabbi. She writes a check on a spot. She gives him a check. Quarter million dollars. She gives the rabbi a check. Thank you very much. And she reaches out her hand to shake his hand. So the rabbi had good midot. Of course, you're not allowed to shake a woman's hand if you're a man. If you're a woman, you can shake another woman's hand. If you're a man, not allowed to shake another woman's hand. There are some poskim that are more lenient with it if it's for the sake of uh, business and things like that. But in reality, Rabbi says no. You want to rely on leniencies? Good luck to you. No problem. But, generally speaking, no reason for you in the world to, to shake a woman's hand. How do you do it? This is what Rami Ponovich says. He goes, no, no, no. We never say goodbye to our partners. In a nice way, we never say goodbye to our partners. We are going to continue talking, this, that. But she got the point. But she didn't like it. She got the point, but she didn't like it. So she said to him, Oh, so my money is good, but my hand's no good. Rabbi Ponovich says, No, no, your money's not good either. Here's your check. He gives back the check. Quarter million dollars. Here's a check. No, 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 no. We don't want your money. Let her go. Gone. Take your quarter million dollars. Chindea. What we say in French, Arabic. Anyway, a year later, get mail every day, envelope shows up, check in there, $100,000. Who? From that lady. Oh, Rabbi, here. Look, the woman sent $100,000. He says, give me an envelope. Give me an envelope. Okay. Writes an envelope, send it right back to her. We don't want her money. This is not the kind of money we want. Send it back. Why? If you think you're buying the Torah with your money, look somewhere else. Look somewhere else. You cannot buy heaven with your money. You have to earn heaven. Sure, you can get a lot of merits and things like that with investments in the Torah and the Kiruv and things like that. But you still have to fulfill the Torah. You still have to believe in it. You still have to follow it. But if you disrespect it because you gave money... It was better off you didn't give money. And that's actually what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, how come Korach got 250 of the biggest rabbis in the world at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu to follow him? The Gemara says, because Korach was the richest man of the land and he was a big donor. And all of those rabbis already by the time he came to them and told them that he's trying to go against Moshe Rabbeinu, they were already in his pocket. What ended up happening? They all died. A horrible, horrific punishment by Kadosh Baruch Hu himself. Why? You can't buy the Torah. It's not for sale. You have to fulfill it. You have to respect it. You have to honor it. And unfortunately today, Rabbi we honor money a lot more than we honor the Torah. What's a test? You can always test yourself. You're in the middle of a shield Torah. You're in the middle of learning in your house. You get a business call. Clients calling your phone. Do you answer? Clients going to offer you $1,000, $10,000, $50,000. You answer? If you answer based on a certain price, that's how much you value the Torah. That's how much you value the Torah. If you're going to answer because the client could potentially give you, or he is going to give you, $1,000, $50,000, that's how much the Torah is worth for you. That's how much it's worth for you. If you don't answer, that means the Torah is worth more to you than whatever money someone's going to offer you. And this is a constant test. It's a constant test for us when we learn, when we pray, when we're simply living our life. So it's important for us to know that, you know, if you're going to buy a Kli Kodesh, you're going to buy a Mezuzah, a Tfilin, a Talit, a Tzitzit, 
anything that's connected to Hashem, this is not one of those places that you just buy anything because it's expensive, or you look for discounts. When you invest into the Torah, it's not just investing into buying CDs. It's also investing into your own stuff that you deal with every day. Your tefillin, your tzitzit, your mezuzah, wherever it is. You have to invest. What does it mean invest? Not just the money. The time, the research. In the, do I know who wrote this? Do I know who did this? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Is it just buying? Because You have to put some more thought into it. This, what I thought, is very valuable because I know that myself, when I was younger and stupider, I had a lot of questions, and one of my questions was, why would anybody spend so much money on mezuzot? Until I saw it with my own hands, and I started re- checking other people's mezuzot, and so on and so forth, and I see the difference. Spoke to a few serious mekubalim, people that understand who, what, when, and how. And you say, it's like, uh, it's like uh, I show them a mezuzah, that even a, a kosher mezuzah. A kosher mezuzah. And then, I, sh- and then I, I show them the other one. I said, okay, so that one, that's like a taranta, and that one's like a plane. You know what Taranta is? You know, in third world countries, many times they can't afford cars. So they have these little two-wheelers that are 8,700 years old. This time from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, but they're still driving somehow. That's a Taranta. Plane, 787. I don't know, uh, the, the, the president's uh, 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 plane. That's the difference. That's the difference between, even, I'm talking about kosher one. I'm not talking about the not kosher is garbage. I'm talking about the kosher one. Versus something that's high-end. Why? Because, again, who, what, when, and how is very, very important in Torah. So, with that being said, the Chabot, who wants to start with some questions? B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha, by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone, you'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat